Are we live? We're live. We're live. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. Tim. And Veronica. Crack Clay. Building a fair proof marriage God's way. We are here at the lake. We wanted to show you the view from our balcony. Isn't that beautiful? So we're going to go swim in a little bit. So that's why we're coming pretty early today because we'll be... Then we got to go back home. Because then we have to travel back home tonight. Because we really want to share a little bit of something that's um, not easy to talk about. His needs, her needs. My number two need or, or my number one need or is definitely the top three that we're going to talk about. I think bit. it's my husband's number one need. And it's important. But, but he's I just scared to say, say that because he doesn't want the pushback. I just want to say some first. In, in uh, Proverbs 27, the righteous man walks with integrity. Blessed are his children after him. You got to lean in, baby. So Blessed are his children after him. So that's a, Jesus telling us how important it is to, be a, to live a righteous life. Because like my dad did to me, it's not what he said on Sunday morning. It's what he didn't say during the week. And I failed in that as a lost person and after I became a Christian to fall into sexual sin because my kids saw that. So that's I'm just here to tell you. If you're not in reading your Bible every day, guys, studying your Bible, reading your Bible, reading the Bible, what God has to tell you, because it's one thing to be a Christian, it's one thing to be sold out to Him. If you're not praying every day, if you're not with other Christian men, Talking to them, involved in a life group, sharing. The Bible says, blessed is the time that we can go to church and be with other people. Literally. You cannot be a secret agent Christian. You cannot fight the battle alone. You need other people. Now. You need other soldiers in your army to fight the wicked darts of the devil who is out to seek and destroy your testimony as a born-again Christian. He wants to destroy it. So we must live a pure life. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Real quick. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man soweth. That shall he also reap. But in go, in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So you can't live in habitual sin, fornication, adultery, and not and if and, and not be convicted by the Holy Spirit and claim to be a Christian. Because after we become a Christian, if we fall, that's one thing now and then. But if we're doing habitually and not convicted, there's no way you can be a Christian. That's why it's so important as a Christian to do what I just talked about. Prayer, Bible study, read it every day. Be involved in church. Be involved in a life group. Be involved with other men. And don't just be involved, be honest. Be honest with them. Be like honest are, with them about like what your struggle, struggles are. Be honest because they can't hold you accountable or be there for you like they're supposed to if you're not honest Gotta about do it. it. Um, because the devil wants to seek and destroy. Mm -hmm. He wants to tear up your life. He wants your life to be a ter poor example to the lost and especially your kids. And he tells you lies in the darkness. Amen. And the, the truth can only come out in the light. So you Amen. have to be honest with it when Amen. you're with your Christian brothers and sisters to okay. walk with you in life. That's why there's community. That's why we go to church. And that's right? why we're so transparent for to tell our story. Praying you guys don't. No one does it. We don't want anybody to do what we did, what we went through. Okay. So, honey, why is it, why is it, do I get such a, a hard, time. hard times when I say one of my number one needs is for a spouse to look her best? A good-looking wife. A good-looking wife. You can just say it. Why, just, why be transparent. Transparent. Okay, but honey, just be transparent. Yeah, but, but, but honey. Okay, so, so honestly, y'all, this is really, I think, my husband's number one need. Mm -hmm. And we've go gone ahead. through this, but he didn't want to go this as number two today because... He was worried about this, the pushback from people because last week we last time for men's number one need we did sex, which is typically most men's number one need, and, and it probably is right up there. It but is. she thinks my one is good looking, and what we're gonna do two weeks from now, which is my 
It's recreational companionship. What she did this weekend by playing tennis and playing basketball. Yes. And I love doing that. I love going and playing basketball. And two of people are playing. Hey, want to play two on two? Everybody wants to do it but my wife. But then she does it. But I do it. I do it. Now, the tennis, though, you do for me. I do. For, I'm what? not good at it. But he knew that I. But when we were dating, he came over one day and found these tennis rackets and tennis balls. And he's like, what are you doing with those? And I said, I've always wanted somebody to play tennis with me. So I bought these tennis rackets and tennis balls. Even bought a cute little tennis outfit, and nobody would ever play with me. So the mm. next time we had a date, mm -mm. he said, put your tennis skirt on. We're going to play tennis. And I cried. I cried because he actually cared about what I wanted to do and took me <laughs> to play tennis. And so I'm not good at it. I just always wanted to learn. But he's teaching me four years later. So why do some women... Four years later, I'm getting why? the hang. Um, so anyway... Why do some spouses think it's shallow or... How immature are you to look at me as if a man has emotional need and women have so emotional remember, need? Well, so remember, ahead. we're doing His Needs, Her Needs by Willard Harley Jr. And one of a man's, most men, most men's top five needs, and these are emotional needs, is a good looking wife, physical attractiveness. But honey, attractiveness says, is what you do with what you have. It is. It is okay. what you do. So not everybody's going to be Miss America or Beauty Queen, and, and that's not what he's saying. But be who he married, right? Um, try to be the per resemble the person that your husband married. And so, ladies, I mean, so he gives an example, and I know a lot of us are guilty of this. I mean, a lot of women have this happen, and there's a lot of factors involved that... You know, she's young and beautiful and thin, and they get married, and the kids come along, and she doesn't have time to take care of herself, and she starts eating off their plate instead of making her own food, and she's not taking the time to exercise, drink her water, eat healthy, and she blows up, and she gains a bunch of weight. Well, and sometimes, even in the case in the book that he gave, they didn't even have kids. She just quit her job and stayed home and got that again, but she lost a bunch of weight to attract a husband had no idea she had ever been previously overweight. Anyway, and then she quit her job and blew up. And then he was like, that's not who I married. And, and so women, though, they think that their husband should be okay with that, right? They In the think, same way as a man. Ah. Well, it's, <laughs> that was not us. Someone passed <laughs> gas back there, but it was, it was a balloon. It was a, it was a raft. A, yeah. The same thing with men would talk to their wives and give them all the intimate conversation in the world. Then after they're married, they think, well, I got her now. I can stop doing that. Does that... Is that in the same line? So there? just like with when we talked about sex and physical intimacy, if he said or or intimate conversation, that like if he he said um, if he just stopped talking to you for three months, that was the equivalent of you telling, not giving him sex for three months. I mean, you can't you you have to Correlate. reciprocate. So for so while a physical attractiveness may not be. A woman's need, so she doesn't understand. In so most she, cases, in, some a, cases. in some cases, so she may accuse him of being selfish or immature because she's let herself go and she doesn't understand why he's bothered by that. Because right? you just look at the heart, right? You don't look at the outside, I and mean, so man I, looks at the outside. Jesus looks in the heart, right? Well, I mean, and, and yeah. But so women, married. women uh, are attracted emotionally, I think, and intellectually, in addition to physically, but that physical is further down than the emotional right. and for men though because God need. created men as visual creatures that's the way right. God created men they are visual beings so because of that he was probably first attracted to you because of your appearance he didn't get to if he didn't get to know like what he saw then he probably wouldn't come talk to you to find out about your beautiful personality right okay so some guys, and again, this is not everybody. Some men might not care. Some men might not have this need. He, his wife could be underweight, overweight. He doesn't care. It makes no difference. He has different needs. So it's about knowing what works in your marriage and what your spouse, what your spouse's needs are. Um, but women do have a really hard, difficult time understanding that this is very important, that they keep themselves up, not only for themselves, but for their husbands. Because when you look good, he feels good. And we, and you feel better, don't you? I, I do, but I was going to say, we've read so many books that address this. It's amazing. 
there's a book that we read um, that was just for it was like what your that I read that he had had when we got married about um, what your husband wishes that you knew. Remember that book? Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was interesting for me because he'd gone in and underlined it, and it was not it was he had had it long before we got married. And he had underlined it, and it was interesting for me to read what he had underlined because I knew those were hot topics for him, things that really spoke to him. But in that book, that the author, which I cannot think of right now, um, he talks about how he goes really into more detail about this and how important it is the physical appearance of a man's wife is to him. So I know so many times when we're younger, ladies, we are not taught this and now in the age of shaming body shaming you can't say anything because if you say something then you're fat shaming you're shaming somebody and this is not about shaming anybody this is just some truth okay just some truth that you need to resemble the person he married and you need to talk to him about what he thinks about how you look or um and and how do you feel about how you look and i can tell you as someone who's been on both sides of it um, you feel a lot better of your about yourself when you when you're taking care of yourself when you're working out and you're physically active then that is given releasing endorphins in your brain and you're feeling better about yourself and you're liable to be a little bit friskier too for him and um, and yourself because there's no shame in enjoying it and it's not just for your husband it's for your pleasure too I, I, and, I, I really think kind of you do look just as good or better than when we got married well, thank you. So it may take a little longer, but I think it looked just the same or better. And you keep, she keeps, she, you know, my, my sweetheart, my sweetheart, this day she wouldn't even go to work because she works, she worked from home. She has, she has an option, what also an option. But you know what she does? Every morning, if she works at home or not, she still wakes up and put her, put her clothes on. She puts her makeup, I'm glad she puts her clothes on, but she puts her good working clothes <laughs> I on that I would about, like. Right. She knows she puts clothes on I would like if I come home for lunch, her makeup, and looks just like that. Whether she's going out or not, boy, I noticed that. I noticed my wife saying, "My my wife loves me. My life, my wife appreciates me. My wife's going out for me." And I, it really speaks to Tim. So, because I know that um, it, it, that my husband likes that. So, what we get up every morning. We've said many times we do our devotions together and we work out together. And he usually leaves for work, and I'm working out when he leaves for work, but I don't stay in those workout clothes with no makeup all day. I, as soon as I'm done, I go get ready for my day as though I'm still going to the office. Right. And I don't wear shorts and casual clothes either. I get dressed up she does. like I'm going to the office, even if I'm not going to the office. And, and she I gets do my full attention. makeup. My, your wife should get your attention. Guys, not, and not everybody has to do that level, no. but certainly no. I remember I have a friend a long time ago. I think good. it was before I ever got married the first time. Right. Um, right. and my oldest is 23, so it was a long time ago. I had a girlfriend and her husband, and her uh, they had been married for a while. Um, and she was a stay at home mom, and they separated. And he told her after they separated, he said, Every you know, before we got married, you you always took care of yourself and you looked pretty and you took, put on makeup and you did your hair. And after we got married and you had the kids and you became a stay at home mom, I came home and every day you didn't put your makeup on anymore and your hair wasn't done and you didn't dress up. Don't you love me anymore? I mean, doesn't it, don't you want to look good for me? And what do you message do you send your spouse when the only time you dress up is to go out? To go out with your girlfriends or to go out to, to church or to go out shopping. If that's the only time you dress up or look nice, you're telling him you don't care about him? That you don't care enough about him to take care of yourself for him? And so, um, I, w I was telling Tim, he said about the, it may take me a little bit longer now, but because I was telling him the story about Dolly Parton back a, a long time ago when I was pregnant with Chance, I went to, on an NBC studio tour. And Dolly Parton was going to be on the Jay Leno show that night, and we were in the Jay Leno studio, and she came out and was so beautiful and gracious and talked to everyone, and she said, at my age, you got to get up really early in the morning to look like this, and I laughed, and I didn't understand at the time because I was in my 20s. But now that I'm 50, I fully understand it. You're 50, honey? I'm 50, I wow. am. So, 
if you if you've gained some weight okay ladies and, and as we age weight becomes much more difficult to keep off it's much easier when you're 19 20 in your 20s to keep the weight off it's a lot harder when you're 50 and the hormones are kicking in and um, but we live in the day of the internet. So even if you can't afford to go get professional help with weight loss, we live in the world of the internet. There are books you can get to read about how to balance your hormones naturally to help you with that. Because I know the old adage of just calories in, calories out, work out, eat right, and that's all good. That's all great for men. But I'm here to tell you, I can do that all day long. If I don't have the right combination of those calories right. or my hormones aren't balanced, then it's going to be more difficult for me. So, but you have YouTube, we have Google. There is, there are tons of online weight loss programs that are virtually inexpensive. You can find it for free. If you need books to read, message me. I'll be happy to send you some great sources of books you can read. Wear makeup, put on makeup. When you put on your makeup and you get up, you take your shower, wash your face. You know that Rachel Hollis book, Wash Your Face, Girl? Seriously, wash your face. There is no excuse for looking frumpy. I don't care how old you are, don't look frumpy. There's no excuse for it. Wash your face, do your hair, do nice. your makeup because you'll feel better about yourself. You'll look better, you'll feel better. It, you know that there's like, it, it changes your whole mindset. There, when, I haven't been in the mental health field, even though I'm not a therapist, I went business and um, technology, but I know from being around therapists long enough that if you're not taking care of yourself, if there's no self-care going on, then there's a sign of a depression. When you start taking care of yourself, you will start to feel better. It's amazing right. how that works. And when a man goes to work, well, he's seeing women at work or other places that look at their best mm -hmm. they look at their best I don't I don't want my husband to come home and I'm the least person he's seen during the day I wanted him to come home and find me the most attractive person he's seen during the day um, and don't some things he touches on we talked about weight a little bit uh, makeup we've talked about and some women can dramatically improve their appearance with just by applying their makeup more effectively and it doesn't mean you have to cake it on you can do light makeup but like I don't understand why some women think it's okay just to go and not wear any makeup and you're 50 years old why do you know where to make up girls we're not 19 anymore Attract it doesn't it doesn't you can even if you're a tomboy there's still a little bit of stuff you can put on. You don't have to be a glamour girl. Yeah, but we all have, okay. guys, we all have different needs, though. This may not apply to a lot of men. It, it, this may not apply to some men. We understand that. And then clothes. This so applies to women, hair, too. Hairstyles, make sure that, you know, if your husband really likes your hair long, like mine, if I went and decided to get it, my hair all cut off, which I would never do because I had my hair short, but he would really be upset. <laughs> and I would tell her. And he would tell going. me. <laughs> yeah. um, so hairstyles, just like makeup, weight, the rest of your physical appearance can make deposits or withdrawals in your husband's love bank. Remember, it's all about making deposits and withdrawals in your husband's love bank. Right. So if you, if he were just to come home and say, I decided to quit my job today, I'm not going to provide for you anymore. That would be the same thing as you, the equivalent to you deciding that you're just going to gain weight and stay that way and he needs to suck it up because he's immature if he says anything about it. The next part I like is clothes, shopping, because real close to this for me is recreational companionship. So finding a common interest, we do have a common interest. As long as I leave my wallet at home, we get along real fine in this, but that's shopping. I love watching my wife try on clothes. I'm, I'm, I'm in the little booth with her every time she does, puts on new clothes, I take a picture. I love it. We have that in common a lot. Use that together, guys. You can see that. So we attractors just look at the best that we can, best that we can look. That's right. That's great for each other and it's great for us. Getting closer. It, it. You know what? I've always said that my husband is better than the best girlfriend because not only does he go shopping with me, but he says buy it. <laughs> 
But I do. I love the way you shop with me. I was talking to a lady the other day, and the group, we were in line at Belk in the return line, and we were talking about how our husbands are so good about shopping for us and with us, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Getting closer, baby, so they can see your face, mm -hmm. your good-looking face. Okay, right. so clothes, clothes. They the old adage: clothes make the man in our society. Clothes showcase the woman. I like that. I like that too. The showcase can enhance or flatter or do something far less than. Okay, so dress to be attractive to your husband and comfortable yourself. And wife. And, right, and wife. So, right, don't, and, and you know. And, that's a need for them. And some women talk about. That's why about you got to communicate. Make sure that's her need. A Go jet ahead. ski behind us. Some women talk about, I mean, and it talks about how women, and we've touched on how some women are not as motivated there, it's not as big a need, but I do want my husband to look nice. I do. I love that he works out in the mornings. I love that he loves weights still. I love it when he dresses nice, and um, I love seeing him in a suit. So, and I, I love seeing him in not in a suit. I mean, like in a jeans and stuff, not like that. Right. I, that wasn't TMI. It was like other yeah, kinds right. of clothes. Yeah. Anyway, um, so it is important to me that he looks good. So, guys, just because we're saying some women don't, don't doesn't mean that you're necessarily off the hook. That's Talk why to your wife about communicate. it. Communicate. Communicate. Yeah. So. Because she's going to, I mean, maybe some, maybe a woman's, she's tempted to erotic novels or, or novels, you know. Or maybe just a good looking uh, guy walking with, by catches her eye because nice she's chest. not satisfied at home. Yeah. Um, so this is something that's big. I'm so glad we read this book before we got married Amen. the first time. I you know too. why? Because nobody ever told me this. Nobody ever asked. No matter how many marriage counselors you've been through or preachers? Yeah, you know, we don't get, ed they don't tell us girls on things to do. I, I think there's so much time spent on getting a husband, but not on how to. Keeping a husband. Maybe. And working on the marriage. Right. Russ said so many times, we research the wedding day. We don't research how to make the marriage good. So, women, even think about what you're wearing to bed. Ooh. Oh, don't wear that old Versailles t-shirt to bed with your husband every night that you've been wearing since college. Uh, unless he likes it. Unless it's Let's attractive, like it. it's maybe that's man. sexy to him. Maybe that's sexy to him, but sometimes we get in these habits and we don't think about what our husband, and sometimes your husband's just too polite to say anything. Or maybe he doesn't even to, know right. because it's his normal, and then you come to bed one night in a little um, pretty nightgown, you know, uh, what are they called? Lingerie. And well, lingerie, and no, but that's the name, you know, just, I'm not even saying you have to wear like a negligee to bed every night, but you can wear negligee. something pretty. And with just the little straps it's still a gown but pretty and strappy and not frumpy and wow just try it and see what kind of look he get you get from your husband what does he say he may not even think about that because you just never have done it but don't come to bed with bag raggle clothes curlers and goop on your face that's not making love to positive. so my wife and i like to go on romantic getaways we we think it's important to put our marriage first god first marriage second mm -hmm. That's important. That's given each other to each ourselves to each other, showing how important that she is to me. So, um, and then personal hygiene. I won't tell you what my wife likes me to go to bed. Okay, go with, go ahead. What do I like you go to bed with? Completely nude. Oh, <laughs> you said I, you know, I won't tell you. Now okay. we told him. Yeah. <laughs> you brought out. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. sorry about that. That was Tima. Personal we're married. Hygiene. We're married. We're Personal so. hygiene. You know, a lot of times, this is not the issue for the women. This is the issue for that the women have with their husbands. Is okay. right. mainly uh, right. women don't have a problem with the personal hygiene, but men have a little bit more difficulty so if you're having a problem where she doesn't want to have sex with you and you've already addressed all the things we talked about right. two weeks ago and you're making sure you're filling all her needs you may want to check your hygiene or just ask her about it um because she a wants shower. a man to, to feel bed. she wants her take a shower before you go to bed brush your teeth yes, before you kiss your wife your teeth, she likes take that a shower she wants she you to that. smell the good kisses are longer Mm -hmm. She wants you to smell good. We have a good sense of smell, typically, and she wants you to smell good. So take a shower, okay? okay. Gotcha. And then, like we said in the beginning, just it's not about being a, a beauty queen. Make the most of what you got. I think there must be a... Oh. Hey, we're having crack clay ministry here. Can you guys clear the lake? Clear the lake. Get those boats and jet skis out ahead. behind us. Okay. Um, so... It just means to 
that your appearance, don't forget that your appearance makes someone else feel good. Right. Think about the other person in your marriage and not just yourself. Because we you, want to give deposits. Right. Way. You're meeting an emotional marriage. need by the way you look. Every day I want to make a deposit in her life. Mm -hmm. Am I, I'm, I make a deposit or withdraw in my wife's life? As her husband, best friend, I want to make deposits. So I want. I may ask her, honey, did what did I do today that you liked? What did I do today that you didn't like? I want to know what she liked so I can do more of it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why crack clay, the reason we're going through all this, crack clay, building a fair-proof marriage God's way to keep the devil out of your marriage. Because he wants you not to meet each other's needs. That's easier for that evil person to get in your marriage, and we want to stop it. So people can be attractive in many ways, and um, some of those, and they and people can have many attractive kinds of attractive personalities that may also meet a, an emotional need, but they usually de deposit love units with the quality um, of their conversation or affection rather than their appearance. So that's the need. So Nobody attractiveness help. is what you said. Do what you do with what you have. Don't be afraid to get a babysitter and go out. Don't be afraid to get babysitter for a weekend and go out. Maybe once every three months. Mm -hmm. Got to do it. Often okay. a wife's attractiveness is a vital ingredient ingredient to the sex, success of her marriage. And any woman who ignores this notion for whatever reasons risks disaster. This is true for some men as well. That was straight from the book because you could probably tell I was reading. Um, so, but we also, once he's noticed that once people start to take care of themselves, they start to feel much better about, about themselves. themselves. And the changes yep. have made them more successful in business. They have improved health. And that mm. is one thing I did want to touch in on in health. And health. Wow. In health. Because you being fit and is and eating healthy and exercising right. is not even just it is good for him to make deposits right. but it's good for you not only your self-confidence but so you can be healthy because you can't possibly as a mom and a wife take care of everyone else when you are drained dry you have to be delegate healthy. well you delegate. have to be healthy right. you have to take care of yourself and you're not healthy when you're putting a bunch of junk in your body it's not right. when you're tired and you can't figure out why you're always lethargic. Are you eating a bunch of sugar or processed carbs? Because that's going to make you crash. And so it's about educating yourself and learning what works in your body and what keeps your energy levels up. Um, I just want to say, even like one of the people I love to follow, I love Shalene Johnson. She is a trainer from Beachbody. I, that's how I first found out about her, is her Pio workouts. But I follow her on Instagram and all the things and and she doesn't even go to the gym without putting her lashes on and I love that because she's she's like me that she always wants to look her best and she will be the first so I, I I'm okay on my small platform when I know that she's okay she does a much bigger outreach than I am a much bigger platform and she tells ladies Put some makeup on. It's amazing. There's no yeah. excuse. Put some makeup on. I remember one make time. Make yourself feel better and, and right. make yourself more attractive to your husband. I remember one time my wife and I did a seminar about this to a, to a church. The first night was on. We talked a lot about this. Well, the second night those ladies came in with makeup on, didn't they? And looking you know, sharp. <laughs> you know, because that, that's important. Yeah. So here it is. Happy Father's Day weekend. Happy Father's Day weekend. For my wife, I want to take her out for Father's Day because I love her. Okay, she's, she's probably not expecting me to get her anything. But we wanted to do this because with us, we're a little different. We, we have kids with us through most of the week, most of the year. Yeah. But we get two or three month hiatus in the summertime to kind of catch up a little bit. So, Romantic treasure events. her. So, so treasure even her. though it's a challenge to find open places to go this right. year, we're still making the most of our um, two month anniversary time right okay we love you guys we love you guys Have jesus a great day. first jesus first in your life draw closer to him spouse second kids third work all the way down the line okay, okay live, live for jesus we're gonna go hit the beach let us know if you have any prayer requests we're here for you we're here for you have a great Thanks, week man. bye jesus